Hello all, thank you for uh, waking up and making time uh, to learn about a new dish uh, that we're, we're going to make today. So uh, what we're going to be making is gnocchi. Uh, we're making a sage gnocchi and then we'll be tossing in a brown butter sauce and a little bit of garlic and parmesan and some fresh sprinkled sage on top. Uh, so because it does take a little bit of time, it's a very simple dish and I'm gonna walk you through everything. Um, it does take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into it. And I promise we'll get to some, some questions at the end. Um, so we're going to move over to the cutting board here. And I'm going to start with, um, everybody should receive that recipe uh, for when you join this link for the uh, gnocchi. So we're going to move over to the cutting board. Um, once we get over there, I'm going to show everybody. Awesome. So the first step is to, uh, you have to peel your potatoes, get all of your eyes removed, cut it into the same size, um, same size and boil it. The reason we cut it in the same size so that everything cooks evenly. Right. Once I've done that, I let it rest in steam dry and then I just take it to a cheese grater and it gets this nice little shred right here. So to make uh, gnocchi, it's a northern Italian dish, right? So, so we think Italian food, there's two areas here. So southern Italy leans more towards fish and olive oil based dishes. And then as you go in northern Italy, as you get to uh, a little bit more mountainous uh, region, you start to lean into those uh, red sauces and those, those heavier dishes. Um, so we're going to be making the, uh, the sage gnocchi from, from Northern Italy. Um, so back to the cutting board. All right, so I've already boiled the potatoes just for sake of time. I've boiled them, taking them to a box grater um, to be able to shred it up. And now I'm going to go ahead and mix it. It's basically going to be a potato pasta. We're making little potato pillows that we're going to boil um, and then we're gonna to toss in the sauce. So um, here I have uh, a lightly floured surface. As you can see, I was doing that while everyone was coming in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by putting all of my potatoes on the lightly floured surface. Okay. From here, the next main ingredients are going to be salt, egg yolks, and flour. And these are going to be your binding agents with the um, uh, with the the starch from the potatoes. So I have sage on the cutting board. You can see at the top of your screen. Uh, fresh herbs I tend to cut last minute. I could have cut these before and got them really nice and fine, but they would start to oxidize. Um, and all of the, the oils will start seeping out. So before I start mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and chop this pretty finely so I can mix it into the, into the gnocchi that we're making here. Oh, so we two seconds and we'll have that nice and finely chopped. Beautiful. Okay, so I have my potatoes here. Then I have my egg yolks that I mixed together, just the egg yolks, not the egg whites. Okay, I'm going to drizzle this over the potatoes. Beautiful, beautiful coloring here. Chef Dan, we have a question from uh, Cynthia. Do you start shredding the potato in cold water and bring to a boil or boiling water? Um, I start with boiling water. Um, so I wait until it's boiling before I add the potatoes in. Um, and then once they're fork tender, meaning I can stick a fork in it and it comes out, like it's ready to fall apart. It's ready to be turned into mashed potatoes. Great question. Um, so you can see my, uh, my uh, pile starting to come together here. So I have some of the sprinkled sage. Um, I have the egg yolks and I have the potatoes. Next, I'm going to add the flour and then I'm going to start kneading it together. I'm not going to knead it. I'm not trying to develop gluten. This isn't like bread in a manner where I'm trying to get it to, um, where I'm trying to let it rise. I just want it to come together and it should be just a little bit sticky at the end of this. This is a fun process, something to do with kids, but make sure you have a dog nearby to look at any scraps that are falling to the floor. So all I'm doing right here is just trying to get my ball kneaded and make sure it's nice and evenly incorporated. I don't want to see any yellow spots standing out. I want it all to be one color. And end all sale, this should be slightly sticky. If it's too dry, um, then it will have a very floury taste at the end. So as you can see, I'm just taking the edge and folding it onto itself and pushing it together. This will take a little bit of practice for you in the sense that you will know when the gnocchi is ready, the more that you do it. Um, so you have to do it a few times. You can see I have a nice smooth dough. The egg is evenly incorporated, but it's a little bit sticky to the touch. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour here and work that in. Good, I don't want so much flour that it's falling apart into pea-sized shapes. So you can see a little bit popping out to the side, um, but I do want enough flour um, that it is not, uh, not so sticky that I can't handle it. So I'm mixing the flour and you saw the sage, the egg yolks and the potatoes. I'm kind of just forming it into a nice smooth ball here. 
beautiful. So you can see that we have a nice even color. You can see that sage kind of poking throughout. You can see it's nice and smooth. It's holding together. When I pick it up, it's not falling apart off to the side. This is the texture that I'm going for with gnocchi. As I'm touching it, I can feel a little bit of stickiness as I pull my finger away. That is where you want it. You don't want it to be super dry. You also don't want it to be so wet that you can't handle it, okay? Pretty simple. So once we boil our potatoes, we mix in our sage, our flour, our egg yolks, which you can find in the recipe. And I completely forgot salt. So I'm gonna make a little, little volcano here and I'm gonna add the salt and sprinkle it around and work that in nice and evenly. Wanna make sure that I'm making it nice and even. It's almost like Play-Doh um, is kind of the texture that you're going to get if you ever played with Play-Doh growing up. But again, I'm not trying to knead it so that it rises. I really just wanna get everything mixed uh, nice and even. Again, you can see my gloves. I can feel it sticking and pulling off a little bit. Um, but again, it's holding together. If I stick it down here and lift it up, it's not going to take huge chunks of it off. So it's a little bit hard to describe texture. But once you do that, you'll be able to, once you, if you do it once, you'll know, you'll know. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but once you get to that point, you will be good to go, I promise. So um, again, we have our potato, salt, flour, egg yolks, uh, fresh chopped sage in here, and my little, uh, little gnocchi ball. At this point, um, there are a couple things you can do. You can put it in the freezer um, or fridge. It should hold for up to two to three weeks if you want to roll it out later but it can also be made fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to making it fresh. So I'm going to take about half of this, show you how to make the gnocchi pillow, okay? Uh, what I'm doing here, this is kind of a, a baker's trick that you will do, uh, do with bread. Um, so I'm putting my hand around it, creating a cage, and then I'm roll, 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 and you can see it forming into a nice even ball here, okay? Chef Dan, uh, yes. can... Patrick has a question. Can you use a ricer for the potatoes? Yes, yes, you can definitely use a ricer. You can, um, like I said, I used a, a, a just a normal cheese grater, something that everybody ha should have at home. Um, you can use a ricer. If you don't have either of those, you can take your big strainer. It's called a colander that you would dump your pasta into and just push it through the holes in there. Um, but you want to get those nice potato shreds. Okay. So at this point, we've talked about the flour and getting that good balance. What I'm doing right now is I'm putting some flour on my gloves. So they started to get a little bit sticky um, just so I can work with it and roll it out. Now, I'm gonna make sure I have a nice clean, clean area to work with. As I'm rolling it out, we're going to start in the center here, okay? I'm basically going to make a snake, a Play-Doh snake, right? This is, this is definitely a childhood dish. Once we get to a certain point, um, what happens is uh, most people tend to either mash in the center or they mash on the sides. And we want it to be nice and even all the way across. So the technique is I'm going to put light pressure on this log, okay? And I'm gonna spread my fingers out. And that's how I'm gonna get, go, get it to go to the side nice and evenly. So I'm gonna roll it and I'm slowly starting to spread my fingers out, trying to make sure it's all nice and even. That way we're going from the center out, okay? And then the goal here is to make everything nice and even. I can see that my thin or my uh, center is a little bit thin. So I'm gonna go to the thick parts, which are just near the outside and continue to roll it. Okay, everyone sees my fingers are spreading, spreading, spreading. And if there are any thick parts, I'm gonna come in and push on those and do the same thing. Chef Dan, uh, it looks like you have a stainless steel surface. Uh, will stone or woodwork as yes. well? That will 100% work. Um, I like to use stainless steel because it's easy to clean up. As you can see, the mess I've made. Um, so it's very easy for me to clean up after this. You can do it on a cutting board. Um, I would avoid doing it on a cutting board like this, those plastic style, because the flour will get into every little nook and cranny. It will take a little bit of time to clean out. Okay. So at this point, I have the, uh, the log rolled out and it's nice and even all the way across. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's all pretty close to the same size, about three quarters of an inch to an inch tall. Okay, it's still holding together. You can see it's not breaking apart. That's how I know I have the right amount of flour, eggs, potatoes involved with this. We're almost at the fun part. Okay, so for this, uh, I'm basically to make these uh, potato gnocchi pillows, I'm gonna come along about every inch, I'm going to cut all the way through, okay? I don't know if everybody can see this. I'll show you when I'm holding my knife, two things. I'm pinching here and here, 
So I have most stability. And then I'm putting the spine of the knife right at the base of my pointer finger. This allows my whole arm to have stability. And then secondarily, when I put my hand down, I'm using a claw. That way I don't cut the tips of my fingernails off by sticking it out. And the knife can sit right here, right on the knuckle. And I just do the choo-choo train and it keeps it from cutting myself. Uh, so at this point, we can see all of these lovely little pillows, right? Everything's holding together. It's not too sticky. Next step is we're gonna shape it into the uh, gnocchi style. So the way that we're going to do this is there are things that are called a gnocchi board, which has lines and ridges on it. That you can roll it down. But what we want to do is we want the sauce to stick to it, right? Um, so for the sauce to stick, we need to create a little bit of a, almost a U shape here. Um, and some ridges on it are going to help all the sauce to stick. Gnocchi is one of the most beautiful pastas in the world because it pairs well with your, your red sauce and meat. Um, and it also pairs well with your, your brown butter and garlic that we're going to do today. Um, it pairs well with a pesto. You can pair it with just about any sauce that you want, but you want the sauce to stick to it. So I have this lightly floured fork and I'm going to place the pillow on here. I'm gonna push it down, okay? So it kind of spreads out. You can see the indent of my finger here. And then as I'm pushing, I'm just going to roll it down the rest of the gnocchi, okay? And it's going to create these little ridges that are going to help it stick. Come on, buddy. There's a good one. So you can see these gnocchi ridges that are around the outside. That's a traditional style gnocchi. And then I have this U shape in the center um, that is going to allow it to hold on to all the sauces. So fingerprint and roll. This is something that is great and fun to do with kids. Um, so I recommend doing it. Like I said, it is a little bit messy, but it is kind of like adult Play-Doh that you get to eat. Uh, I don't know about you. I definitely ate Play-Doh uh, as a kid. That was not a good food to eat. This is Play-Doh you can eat. So again, push and just roll down the tines to get those beautiful ridges. If need be, go ahead and dust your, your fork again. Push, roll, good. So you can see those times coming in that are gonna pick up the sauce and we're creating that U shape. So just roll right off. Oh, that one did not work. There we go. It is okay if it's not perfect, it is going to be tossed in a sauce, right? It looks like I'm having a little bit of difficulty with it. So it looks like I need to practice as well. Push and roll, just roll down the times to get those ridges right here. If you have a gnocchi board, I recommend that. It definitely works uh, a little bit better. It's a little bit wider um, and has, has some more area for you to roll down the outside. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right. So once I've got all of these gnocchi pillows ready to go, two things. We're going to start boiling them, and then we're going to make the sauce. Um, so we're going to come back out to the uh, main camera. So behind me, right here, I have this pot of boiling water. Gnocchi, you can do it fresh. At this point, if you wanted to save it, if you're making a bunch of it, what you could do is dust the inside of a Ziploc bag. Um, you can put them in there, you can put them in the freezer, eat them up in two or three weeks later, so you have a bunch of pasta ready to go. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in the, in the boiling water that's behind me. They take anywhere from two to four minutes, depending on how high your heat is. So it is at a simmer and starting to boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up, dump them all in. At this point, I want to make sure that they're not sticking together as I put them in. Otherwise, we'll get one really gummy piece. Um, kind of a telltale sign of gnocchi is that they start to float. So at, the, at this moment, they're all sitting on the bottom because I have it a rolling boil. Those, uh, uh, those bubbles are kind of punching it um, and keeping it off the bottom so it's not going to stick to the bottom. So gnocchi is cooking. We're going to cook those eggs. It's going to set that flour potato starch so that it can hold its form, right? And then we'll come back to the cutting board. Let's start on the sauce. All right, so as we're on the cutting board here, you can see that I have this brown butter. Basically, what happens is to make brown butter is all the milk solids start to caramelize and turn a little bit brown. Um, so I have undercooked this um, because we're going to throw it in the pan with the garlic, but you can see that it's a deeper golden brown color than butter you were just melting. And that's what we're aiming for. It has a very nutty smell. Um, so pay attention to the smell as you're doing that. Uh, a couple ways you can get the rest of the milk solids out. Uh, number one, you can take a spoon and pick up the milk solids while it's hot. Or number two, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just strain it. And that will get the majority of the milk solids out. 
Okay, beautiful. So I have this golden brown butter. You can see right here, this is going to be my sauce. Okay, it's a little bit deeper color um, than your typical butter when it's melted. And that's what we're aiming for. That's gonna have that slight nuttiness and earthiness that we're looking for. So at this point, um, I'm going to take the butter. This is my sauce, so I'm going to be heavy on it. I'm gonna start with one ounce of butter and we can go back to the uh, zoom out on the camera. All right, so I did about an ounce and a half. And what is going to happen now is I'm going to turn the heat on and I'm going to start to saute my garlic in that. So I have my heat with my brown butter. I'm going to take about a tablespoon of garlic, finely minced garlic right here, add it to the pan. The gnocchi pillows are just about rising to the top, so they're really, really close. What I want to do right now is make sure that the garlic is sauteed. I'm not necessarily looking for color. It should just start to smell like garlic. I want to get it nice and hot, okay? Once this gets nice and hot, I'm going to pull the gnocchi out of the pot. I'm going to strain it uh, to make sure there's no water. And then I can go ahead and add it to the pan with the garlic and get a nice even coat on it. Jeff, Lastly, can you, Jeff, can you show them uh, uh, what the gnocchi looks like while it's boiling? Maybe bring it over and just show them real quick. Yeah, of course. They're asking for that. Back to the cutting board. So. All right, so I have a hot pot here. You can see everything's starting to puff up at the top. You can see that everything's floating. It's kind of puffed up a little bit, um, but it's starting to float. And I, as I feel it, it's very solid. Um, in just about a minute, I will take one out and then we'll, uh, we'll cut it here so you can see how dense it is and how it's not falling apart. Uh, so what I'm doing right now, like I was talking about with the, with the vegetables, is for the uh, sage that I'm going to add, this is going to be sprinkled on top so we have a pop of green. So we don't just have the brown butter and the, the white of the, the gnocchi. And this will really make the plate stand out, but I want to cut it last minute so it doesn't start to oxidize and bruise, okay? All right, get that finely chopped. I know you can't hear it or smell it. The best part about cooking is that you get to use all of your senses. So I can hear that the garlic's starting to brown up a little bit. I can smell the garlic coming out. Beautiful. At this point with the gnocchi floating, I'm going to go ahead and strain that out. Beautiful. I'm gonna bring one back over to the cutting board that we can cut into. Okay, once I have all of the water, Strain out of here again. I want to make sure that I get all of the water out. I'm going to add those to the pan. You can hear it starting to sizzle. That's that water and that fat mixing. They are not friends. Beautiful. So as we're on the cutting board, you can see this little piece of gnocchi. So you can see that it's holding its form. It's not sticky. It's not running around. Cut into it with a fork and it should have a little bit of resistance. And again, you can see that it's holding its form. It has a firmness to the touch as everything has started to set together. So at this point, I have a little bit of golden brown garlic here. I have my brown butter sauteing. Again, I can smell it. All I'm doing is heating up the gnocchi. The gnocchi was hot. It is already cooked. Tossing in the brown butter sauce, trying to get a beautiful flavor, um, beautiful sauce holding together here. And Chef Dan, how long do you boil the gnocchi for? Gnocchi, until it floats, is a good rule of thumb, but it'll take anywhere from two to four minutes, depending how big you make them and how, how high your heat is. If that makes sense. Okay. And can this be baked or fried? It can definitely be fried. Um, it could probably be baked. I've never tried it. Um, putting a little bit of oil on the top to get that golden brown and baking it um, is definitely a beautiful option. All right. So now what I'm going to do is be careful not to put too much butter in the bottom, right? We do have the butter as the sauce, but we don't want it to cloud the entire dish. Okay, so if we come back over to the cutting board, next thing, this is the fun part of being, being a chef, right? I gotta make it beautiful, okay? So I'm gonna add some height to it, get it to stand up in the center of the dish. I'm going to sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top and to fill in that white space around the plate, okay? This is a hot dish. So what's going to happen is the cheese is going to melt as it sits here, or you could throw it in the oven or a broiler making sure I get Parmesan cheese all the way around. And then I'm gonna to top it with that freshly cut sage that we just talked about. So again, I can get that pop of green. You can see a little bit of the uh, residual sauce. 
um, sitting here in the bottom. Okay, and that's okay. We don't want oil coming up the sides. We don't want it swimming in oil. But as you can see, we have a nice toasted garlic here, a nice golden brown garlic. We have our sage gnocchi. We have this beautiful Parmesan that is going to start melting here on top. And then we have a pop of green. So we formed it, we've set it, we've added some height to the dish. And now we have a beautiful five-star dish.